As a country, we failed to make hay while the sun shines until the fissures in our economic fortune developed into cracks. Now the bubble has burst as the country is now officially broke. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, sounded the alarm bells when she said the country's debt service cost in the first quarter of 2022 was 1.94 trillion naira, which is 310 billion naira higher than the revenue received during the period. The minister who stated this when she unveiled the 2023 medium expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper in Abuja says it is clear indication of dangers ahead. Finally, Nigeria's debt service surpasses revenue by yeah. 301 billion naira just in the first quarter of the year. Mm. What is this telling us as a, as a... Well, We knew this mm. will happen. No one can deny that we are not warning that this was on the way. When you spend about 90% of your earnings to service debt and your appetite for amassing more debt has not diminished, that time will certainly come when what you set aside for debt servicing will be higher than your capacity to generate revenue. Nigerians deceive themselves a lot. There are some metrics that do not work for our country. <laughs> I look at People blowing grammar and ending up saying absolute rubbish. I just shake my head. When we began to warn about breaking up debt all over the place, we were told that, oh, our debt to GDP ratio was good enough, this and that. And I warned that it should be debt to revenue ratio that we should be looking at. Mm -hmm. We are not Japan. We are not the US. We don't, in fact, when it comes to their GDP, they are light years ahead of us. So we should not even be talked about. We and the US should not be talked about in the same sentence when it comes to GDP. The Americans could say, yes, our debt to GDP ratio is fine. The, the Japanese could say that. The Chinese could say that. But not Nigeria. Nigeria. What matters most before a decision to take a loan is your capacity to pay back. And pay back without significantly hurting your capacity to deliver on infrastructure projects. Once debt servicing hampers your capacity to take care of other sectors, to provide enough for education, to provide enough for healthcare, to provide enough for water supply, and to be able to deliver on infrastructure, which in itself enables growth to take place, then something is wrong. You can't keep taking loans when your capacity even to end revenue is diminishing. And I say our capacity to end revenue is diminishing because of a lot of factors. Corruption is one of them. I've seen the National Assembly complain that the dozens of revenue, federal revenue generating agencies, that there's no transparency. These guys are just interested in milking the rest of us. Where they earn salary, they are happy to earn salary, but they are not happy to do the work. And where they do the work, they help themselves to some of the revenue generated. These are the people, in spite of the TSA, opening secret accounts. We have some of the revenue that should go to government 
are kept. The ICPC discovered dozens of illegal accounts. I'm not aware that anybody has gone to jail. What were they doing with those accounts in contravention of the um, TSA? They are simply keeping money that belongs to you and I and to Dotton and to everyone else. That's where they are keeping them. So the avenues through which our resources are leaking are many and they remain unplugged. That is one. Coming to our biggest revenue earner, oil. What have we been doing? OPEC gave us a quota that to the shame of Nigeria we are unable to meet. Because in the past we complained that ah, they should that we, we can produce so much, they should give us so much. Tam David West, the virologist, is regarded in many cycles as the greatest oil minister to come out of Nigeria, partly because of his work in getting OPEC to give us greater oil quota back then. So that so for doing that, we still see him as a hero. Today, OPEC will give Nigeria quota, we can't fill it. And what that means is we are losing money. It's already been estimated that for quarter two of 2022, we lost about 703 billion Naira because of our inability to meet this quota, because of winning investment. Do you know that some foreign uh, oil um, uh, majors, they are leaving Nigeria. They are divesting from Nigeria. Who wants to stay in a country that is not safe? Because of all kinds of situations, the, the oil theft has never been as high as we yes. have it now. So you, that's 703 billion or so that we lost in the second quarter. That money, with our sense of months went for two months. All the British of government shared just in this region. In some cases, 500 and something billion. Some cases. So, uh, there were occasions when they shared just 300 and yes. something billion. billion. So, I'm saying that I've seen months when we, in, in two months we shared just a little more than this. Mm. So, we have a situation in which we are losing a lot of what should come to us. And there were months when the NNPC, the cash cow, did not contribute a dime to the federation account. The three tiers of government had to share revenue generated from other sources, customs, uh, Nemasa, the rest of the Fire NNPC didn't contribute to one naira. Why? Because they claim that the subsidy bill that they are paying, by the time we are suffering from um, oil theft, massive oil theft, and then the huge subsidy bill means that by the time they bring what they earn from crude oil sales for the month and they pay subsidy, a subsidy bill, there is nothing left. Yet, we are not paying attention to the unbelievable subsidy bill that it gets thrown at us every month. Oh, it's the water that one million liters a day. Whereas, if we sit down and think, use our brains, even optimally, we will know that there's no way Nigeria can consume water than one million liters a day. Mm. So, if you do something about the so called consumption rate, the subsidy bill itself will come down. If we do something about the oil theft that continues to uh, bother us, we will earn more revenue from oil. If we do something about the revenue generating agencies that are stealing from the rest of us, we will be able to earn more money. My suggestion is that we need to take those measures before breaking in more debt. I hope that this government will at least stop at some point. I know that 
the Senate, the way it is constituted, does not see anything wrong no, in taking this debt. But you are postponing the evil day because some, at some point you have to pay for mm -hmm. what you are taking. It's not given to you for free. No matter how good, how attractive the payment Thumbs. plan is, mm -hmm. you've got to pay back. Mm -hmm. Why? What, look at the problem in Osho now. The governor couldn't fulfill a lot of his obligations because he had yes. debts to pay. Oh. And the governor thought, okay, if I'm paying back this debt in the fullness of time, money coming from the traditional account to me will increase because I will have paid off some of the debts. So he struggled to pay between 80 to 90 billion back. He struggled to pay those ones. But at the expense of offending civil servants who have outstandings with the government that the government has not paid. So the governor has been defeated, <laughs> partly because of some problems that were created. Look at in Ogun State. I'm sorry to go, go there, but we have to say it. Look at Ogun State where I live. People are complaining, ah, look at the bad roads in Alagole, uh, Akute, um, Ayawele, um, uh, Olambe, someone will call it Olambe, uh, Olambe. it's all, actually Olambe, Olambe and all these places. The governor has forgotten us. There's a limit to what he can do because every month he has to pay back from his own, from what comes to him from the Federation account. Part of it must go to their services. There is, people must realize that there are implications for taking loans all over the place. All right, Doctor, <laughs> let me come to you. Thank uh, you very much, Bikio, for, for that perspective. <laughs> let me come to you, Doctor. I'm sure that um, after a while, based on what Bikio has said now, a lot of people will give it serious thought of venturing into leadership position in this country. Because the times are not as easy as they used to be when we had money and we didn't have what to do with it. It's a shame that we are where we are. Based on the um, figures released by the NMPC, there is no way That's cooperation as it is. And contribute as much as it should to the Federation account. Because whether it is taking money at the official exchange rate, which is 400 and about 400 and something, Naira to a dollar, or at the black market where you have it at over 650 Naira now to a dollar. The landing cost of petrol in this country can't be afforded by the average Nigerians. As at the last time, if you take it at the official exchange rate, as we were told, the landing cost of a liter of petrol in this country is 430 naira. If you go to the black market, it's about 600 naira per liter. Then you still have all this. Um, government need, will need to do, um, all age, this, that, that. At the end of the day, what gets to those who are taking the fuel out? It goes out at about 80 naira, meaning that already the country is losing about 350 naira on a liter. So we need to really sit down now as a country and get our priorities right. All right, so people have continuously you know, talked about, I do apologize, people have continuously talked about cutting the cost of governance. Why is this yeah. so hard to do? Well, what I've seen, my own experience, what it tells me is that you need a strong man, a, 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 somebody with strong will to do that. The first observation is that our security agencies give this false impression that there are people who are after all our leaders mm. to kill them. So what they do is to continue. I, I don't know how it, I don't know whether it is true or false, 
But the moment you succeed in convincing a leader that except there are 20 vehicles in this convoy mm. and they can jump from one to the other in order to disguise, and you are not ready to cost, cut the cost of governance because that is where it starts from. Everybody who is a commissioner, even special advisor, local government chairman, wants a bulletproof vehicle. And we know how much it is. We also have gotten to a point where our kind of election requires you, based on the Electoral Act then, to have as many aides as possible in order for them to be able to vote during primaries. So you have some governors who will, in one day, appoint 1,000 special advisors. Mm. And these are purely for political reasons. And once you appoint, you are looking at giving them office, you are looking at giving them vehicles, you are looking at giving them security aids. And that's why we end up, most of our policemen, um, civil defense, soldiers, they end up with all these political appointees because they must get them. All right, um, gentlemen, we have a caller, Muftar Abubakar from Kano. Hello, Muftar. Hello, good afternoon. Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Afternoon. How, how are you doing? Oh, good. Very well, very well. Please, I just want to make a contribution to what you are discussing now. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, in the first place, I don't believe that Nigeria is broke. Nigeria is never broke for the simple reason that if we are in an economic crisis, the best option is to cut up government spending. When we cut government spending, and whatever we use, whatever we have to get, whatever we want. Now look at a National Assembly renovation of 30 billion naira. This is, this is ridiculous. What is there that you can do? It's not a new one that you're constructing. Now look at the corruption level. A person is alleged to have told him 109 billion naira. And a lot of things is going on in NNPC without checking. Our senators are there sitting down. The presidency is looking at people that are siphoning, they are phoning the world of the nation. All and right. the people are suffering. Thank you and very much, say, Muftar. And so we say we are broke. Thank you. Thank we you. Are broke. <laughs> Thank you. All right, gentlemen. Let, we are talking yeah, about let, is let's, what? Quickly on a break. let's quickly go on a break. We'll be back with, with this discussion. All right, welcome back to Journalist and Girls. Now, gentlemen, before we went on that break, we were talking about Nigeria's debt. Now, Nigeria is a developing country with a fast-rising population of over 200 million people, and we are in dire need of infrastructure redevelopment. So many people have said this high level of debt is quite justified. Well, you, you, can't, you can't justify it in the face of what you're earning. Mm. If like it has been argued, you take debt to produce. Different ball game. You are taking debt to consume. The, the, the chunk of our debt is going to consumption or future projects. For instance, you are running a railway project and you are taking so much money, loan. It's not something that is going to happen now. And we all know, just like it has happened on some of the routes that are in operation now, Abuja to um, Kaduna, Lagos to Ibadan, I mean to Abeokuta, Ibadan. Those things don't bring in immediate funds. You keep spending, you keep, so you don't go into such. For instance, if we, have, if we take a loan and Ajakuta becomes functional today, okay. meaning that we can service the whole of Africa and beyond, mm -hmm. it's understandable. But not like we are taking loans to pay um, um, political office holders. That's, that's I'm thinking. Thank you. Yes, at the rate we are going, we are going to take loan to pay debt, if we are not careful. One, these debts are denominated in foreign currencies, so they are, okay. they are going to rise in response to the falling value of the Naira. So the Naira that you need to pay for debt will be a lot more than before because mm -hmm. the Naira is crashing against, uh, against the dollar especially. I think um, it went to like 658 um, during this weekend. 658, imagine people um, buying the 
dollar at 658 to a dollar, 658 naira to a dollar. I never thought that day could come because I grew up at a time when the Nigerian currency was stronger than the dollar. But here we are today. We are not producing. Our warehouses have been taken over by churches, and people don't see anything wrong in that. And we want the currency to continue to to get strong. It's not going to happen. Well, we care. What is happening to the recovered loot? Even if you, some of those, you see, it's not everything that we've recovered. Some mm -hmm. of them, they, are, they, they have cases in court. They have interim for future order. If you have interim for future order, that does not um, mean that you can access the fund, you can mm -hmm. start spending the money. Okay. Uh -huh. It's not in all cases that we can touch what we have seized. Mm -hmm. Because the final for official order has not been received from the courts in respect of all that money. So when people hear of, uh, oh, they seized this money somewhere, you, you don't have a final for feature order on all of them. In any case, what we are talking about is not, it's not as big as many people think it is. It is. By the time you think, okay, we've used Abacha loot for um, legal by the expressway, for the second Niger bridge, we took money from there, we took from the Sovereign Wealth Fund. If we were buoyant, would we be going to take money from all those sources to, mm. to, to build a, a essential infrastructure? So. I still think that we have to improve production. If we improve production, we will be able to earn more foreign exchange through export. Back in the 80s, we were able to do a lot of that. You know, we had cash crops and all that that we were making money from. Today, people don't even want to get involved in farming. The farming population is getting old. Young people are not really interested. And even those who are interested, they are not getting the support that, mm. they, that they require. So we have all kinds of problems that we have to solve before we can get up to the point when we can truly say we are out of the woods. Right. Things will not change extraordinarily in the next few years because a lot of things have been battered.